he pushed on the progressive prosecutors that are, for example, here in New York City, saying that things like using, taking a gun into a store, robbing it, but then leaving and nobody gets killed, that that's a misdemeanor? Is the president okay with that? Well, look, the president's not going to wade into uh, the actions of prosecutors or of the, of the legal justice department. That's his his bottom line. But he's also been very clear. He's been a longtime supporter of cops programs, of the police, of local first responders, of local law enforcement. And he has been an advocate for additional funding. The White House refusing to call out radical DAs as cities across the country are being rocked by rising crime and senseless violence. Police arresting the career criminal they say stabbed UCLA grad student Brianna Cooper to death inside a high-end furniture store. Suspect Sean Laval Smith was finally arrested at a bus stop, and big surprise, he has a ridiculously long rap sheet filled with dozens of crimes in three states. And at the time of the murder, he was free on a $1,000 bond. And a heinous crime in New York, where an 11-month-old baby girl was hit in the face by a stray bullet. She is in critical but stable condition. Local leaders in both states venting their fury over what is happening. Does it matter to me if it's a police officer shot or if it's a baby shot? I'm going to stay in these streets until this city is safe. Mm. I'm not going to surrender this city to violence. We have an open air mental asylum. He was arrested possibly for possession of stolen items. It used to be a felony, now a misdemeanor. Got out on a ticket in October, and just a few months later, he's killing uh, uh, Brianna. So, Dana, I was so grateful that you asked uh, Jen Saki that question because crime affects so many people around the country and is getting worse. But her answer is doesn't really work in terms of solving the problem. You can support the police, but if the system doesn't work together with the prosecutors to have charges and keep these guys in jail, they get out and murder young women while they're at work. So from her perspective, right, so this, this is apparently, this is the president's position. This is what she's told, he's, she, he has told her, and that's going to be his position. I think it's untenable for two reasons, both political and also policy. First, on the policy side of things, uh, the, the White House absolutely does set a tone and an agenda for what is prosecutorial um, e emphasis. Like, what do you want to emphasize? What do you care about most? And that can trickle down to the attorney general and others. Also, they'll weigh in on lots of other things that have nothing to do with the federal government on local issues. Why not this one? Um, and then you have the real, very real issue that Americans are showing concern about crime in the top five issues that they're worried about. And when you have over a third, just a third of the country saying that he, uh, the White House understands problems that they're worried about, uh, that becomes an untenable from a political standpoint. Because Republicans are going to be talking about crime because that's what people care about and because it needs to be talked about. So it's untenable that the Democrats are just going to say, oh, this is just a local issue and walk away. Because everybody can draw a straight line from uh, Democratic donors to these progressive uh, district attorneys and everyone's starting to get a real clear sense as to what the outcome is of that. You had today, guess what? Right before we came on the air, the new district attorney here in New York, attorney... Uh, Bragg, he said, disavowing the memo that he wrote the other day. Didn't want people to misunderstand mm. what he meant, trying withdrawing it. Good. Good. But people have already resigned over it, and, and they elected him. So it is having an impact. I think it's untenable from a policy standpoint and a political standpoint, and we'll see how long it, their silence lasts. So, Geraldo, uh, Jen Psaki says that Joe Biden doesn't want to wade into Justice Department issues, but the Justice Department has a role to play when it comes to federal gun charges, when it comes to other federal crimes that these guys are committing. Uh, under Attorney General Bill Barr, he launched Operation Legend uh, to deal with precisely this rise in crime. So why isn't the president engaging the Justice Department to clean up the streets? Because they have Katie obsessed over this phony voting rights bill, invoking the language of the civil rights movement to get a bill passed that would allow people to vote without ID and with unrestricted mail-in ballots. So let's talk about that stuff rather than what people are really concerned about. There were six kids shot in Chicago on Tuesday. 
Yep. On Tuesdays, six kids were shot. You got the, the, you know, a lady, the Asian lady pushed on the tracks. You got Brianna in Los Angeles knifed to death by a guy on out on low bail. I mean, we know if if Donald Trump had focused and intensely on that and not gone drifting off about the election being fixed and all the rest of that, he would be president today. People care about this. The first role of government is to keep people safe. This is the civil rights issue of our time. How many times do I have to say it? Black on black crime, yeah. that's who's mm -hmm. killing everybody. It's the minority people are, are there's, a, there's a ghetto civil war going on and we're too politically correct to admit it. You know, I'm a street guy. I've been around New York a long, long time. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not afraid to say this stuff. But where, where is Biden? Why doesn't he say it? The yeah. Democrats in these cities should pick up the mantle. There has never been a successful reformist prosecutor ever, 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 ever. Never did leniency lead to safety. It's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You need stop and frisk. You need aggressive policing. Mm -hmm. You need the police to feel that they are supported by the public. Yeah, so Greg, the reason Joe Biden's not going after these DAs or saying anything about it is because he would have to confront this leftist ideology that some of this crime is okay because it serves a purpose of social justice in a way that the left wants. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the victimization or the death is merely just some kind of collateral to this radical remaking of society. The, and, and to your point, I hate saying that, but I did. Mm -hmm. um, the re they don't want to talk about violent crime because it's on them. Uh, when you're talking about the radicals, that's their side. So to paraphrase Joe Biden, they're on the wrong side. They're on the wrong. They're on the side of the criminals. As long as they support progressive policies, this is only going to get worse. But they can't switch sides because then they're on our side, and they don't want to be on our side. Geraldo's right. You know, I, we've we've learned that politi most politicians they can't do two things, right? So when they're like they're obsessed with impeachment, you know, COVID just takes off. It was the same month, and now what they're doing is they obsess over this. The sham of a voting bill, again, Geraldo's right on that, when in, when in fact you have crime exploding. Nobody at home last night cared about the voting bill or Russia. They wanted to hear about kill, the deaths, how you were going to fight this weird explosion in crime. They can't do woke politics and fight crime because woke politics is antithetical to crime. It is, it, it, it is um, uh, to fighting crime. It believes that the criminal is, in fact, the victim to a larger society and that we are, in fact, the oppressors. So it'll never change until the Democratic Party learns to deal with this toxin in their own group. Yep. Jesse. Well, if Greg said they don't want to be seen as publicly on the side of law and order Republicans, they can call these DAs on the phone. Mm -hmm. They could have a nice private conversation, Joe Biden and Krasner and Garcon and Bragg, and say, guys, not only are people getting killed, you're killing my popularity. This crime wave is killing me politically. So tighten it up and we'll get this thing under control. These DAs have political aspirations. They don't want the president of the United States on their bad side. They'll tighten things up. Everybody works the phones if you're the president. LBJ, Bush 41, Trump famously would burn up the phones talking to party allies, either just shooting the breeze, talking shopper, you know, talking politics. Barack Obama mm -hmm. used to hop on the phone with Kamala Harris when she was the AG of California and talk all the time. He actually did say that she was the best looking attorney general in the country. So maybe that did cross <laughs> the line with Michelle, but the, he's not prejudicing a proceeding or giving one side a tactical advantage in a case by calling a district attorney. That's like a fake ethical straw man. They're just throwing up so they don't have to dive into this thing. I went out on the streets to shoot a package for prime time, which you can see on the little bottom right of your screen for Monday. Everyone I talked to when I said, what do you want me to cover on prime time? They said crime. Every race, creed, or color yeah. said they want you to talk wow. about crime. And the problem with Joe Biden, That's he is cool. not tapped in to the emotional current of this country. Imagine right. Trump's president, and they have like these high profile homicides, people being pushed to death in a subway in New York or in LA, getting slashed to death, the two biggest cities in the country, back to back crime like that. Trump would be out there holding a press conference. He'd be calling their parents on the phone. And Biden is just yeah. out of touch.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.